to talk about moving beyond the silver bullet. I think we're talking a lot these days about what technology is going to get kids up to grade level and so on and so forth. And I really think it's a narrow-minded approach. My feeling is that this audience will probably be um, feeling the same way as I am, but I could be wrong. So we're going to talk a little about the silver, beyond the silver bullet. OK, so I wear lots of different hats, that, hence the hat. Um, I am, since some people think of me as a connector because I use social media to uh, stay connected to my colleagues and to meet people all over the world. Um, and I feel like I'm out of that silo is that most K-12 educators are living in and aren't able to see the things that I'm seeing. So um, these are some of the things that I'm involved with that have kind of contributed to what I'm going to talk about. And it's important for you to kind of understand that context. I'm a little all over the place, um, but these are the, some of the things that have really influenced me. My buddy Steve over there, Steve Harganen, you want to raise your hand? He and I do an online conference, completely virtual, on global education every fall. And so, you know, I've been able to talk and, and, and you know, I don't know if I understand everything yet, but I, I am trying to. So these are some of the questions that are plaguing me right now based on recent events, particularly in light of the Chicago Public School tour that I just did. And, you know, I think the narrative, first of all, around education has been really kind of negative. Um, teachers are feeling really beleaguered. If you're not working with them right now, they are feeling the pressure and they're working, 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 working. Um, I also think it's a huge mistake for us to think that technology is going to revolutionize or change education. It's so much more than that, and I think we've addressed that today, talking about the complexities. And then the other thing is, we talk about highly connected teachers, and I'll get into what that means, but how about highly connected administrators? What are we doing with school leaders to get them to go where we need them to go? So changing the narrative to show that we value education. That's one thing that I, really worries me. Um, this is a Groupon ad that appeared in my email on January 15th. And I don't know if you guys can read it, so I'm going to go to the next slide. But it was an ad for Sylvan Learning. And it started out this, most children dislike learning, which explains why most kids younger than one are unable to read. And I read this and I'm like, what? What does this mean? This isn't funny. Have I lost my sense of humor completely? You know, am I, am I so worried about the state of American education and, worry, and, and so sensitive to being a, t you know, I still think of myself as a teacher even though I'm not in the classroom. Am I still just really, you know, am I out of sorts here? And guess what? I tweeted about it and my friends tweeted about it. They changed it to this. And I, the first thing I thought of when I saw this was Kip. So anyway, um, and then in other parts of the country, in California and San Francisco, this is how it appeared. So I just thought it was like the most bizarre thing ever. I'm like, do you really think, are they really that contemptuous of, you know, of learning? So that's one, of the, one example of this kind of underlying attitude about, you know, we're being flip about education. This is serious. Come on. So um, my friends on Facebook who are, you know, ed tech people and whatever, these were some of their reactions. I, I want to know, am I the only one that thinks this isn't wacky? And I was not. And I think the fundamental one, the bottom one here is really, you know, kids do love to learn. And there are teachers out there who are willing to make a difference. So we need to keep that in mind and tell that story about what's working, what's not working, um, how to inspire, how to get people back on track. Technology alone is not going to change that. And I think we have figured that out. Um, how many people have saw this New York Times article last fall about test scores and this? To me, this is the wrong lens that we're looking for. Um, there have been a series of articles in the New York Times that have kind of, they're, they're challenging um, probably what we believe about education and technology in some ways. Um, and this is one of them. And I think it's the wrong lens. We're not, technology should not be the driver of standardized test scores. Technology should drive things like student engagement, which hopefully will increase student, uh, student test scores. So I'm not about, I'm not anti-accountability. I am pro looking at it through the right lens. And I also think that I'm really excited about <laughs> Apple's new announcement, and there's some debate about that. But here's my problem with this. I don't think this is going to change education necessarily. A, I'm worried about teachers being given the autonomy to develop their own curriculum and their own textbooks. B, I'm not sure if textbooks are the most transformative thing, as we've been talking about here. And then there's all this conversation, can Apple save education? You can insert any company's name into here or any silver bullet idea. But why are we talking about saving education? I think we can do better with what we have and look at it a little bit differently. So technology plus better learning environments. 
I saw schools in Chicago that would, you wouldn't want your, best, your worst enemy to be attending in terms of the physical environment. Uh, informed pedagogy, making practical decisions based on data um, and, and what you know about teaching, good practices. Strong relationships, we don't, we don't emphasize that enough. When I was a beginning teacher, no one said to me, relationships are really gonna be key to your success. Your relationships with your students, your relationships with your principals, your relationships with your colleagues and working together. We underestimate the power of relationships. And then again, what I mentioned earlier, resourceful leadership, people who know how to go out there and get things done and make things happen for their school. Urban schools, I think particularly, are facing, there's some schools in Chicago or substitute any name of any big city where they're dealing with so many problems that are beyond just technology usage. And I think we're, it's easy to forget if you're not in those schools every day and seeing it firsthand. And I was reminded of this when I went and visited my friend uh, to interview for this, for this, uh, this uh, CPS uh, contest. And she said, there was, she said, it's really hard, she's doing all sorts of cool things with the kids and it's hard, hard work because the kids aren't connected at home. And when they come to school, they're so excited to check email and their grades that a deep, engaging, meaningful project is the least thing that they wanna do, which I thought was really interesting. So not only is she dealing with that, but she's also dealing with things, discipline issues with you know, kids throwing windows, you know, chairs out the window and you know, things like that. And we don't realize this in our everyday life. We're not in those schools probably in this room. We still have a lot of work to go on basic things and technology is not a priority in schools like that, I can assure you. So, highly connected teachers and administrators. What about leadership? How are we getting them on board? This is my big pet peeve right now. And Karen Cater from the US Department of Education's um, Office of Educational Technology often talks about the idea of the highly connected teacher, which I love, connected to data, connected to resources, connected to each other. What about the highly connected leader? How are they using it? I very, very infrequently run into school leaders who know how to use social media, who know how to do this stuff themselves. They, they don't walk the talk. How do we get more of them to have those personal experiences where they realize this is gonna empower their practice as well? And so looking forward for the, for the, new, um, for the, for the, for the K-12 edition in particular, we really need to deepen this outreach of this report because you know what, not everybody has heard this, not everybody gets this. Look at the comments on some of the New York Times articles that have been written about education lately, and you, about educational technology, and you'll see there are a lot of people who are really skeptical and who don't understand what we in this audience believe in. We need to tell more stories about what works and you know, taking the stuff that's in the reports and making them come alive in case studies or whatever they are. And then again, we need to really engage the stakeholders, particularly leadership. We need to really focus on them. So this is what I'm seeing on the front lines. Um, hope it will be helpful. I think it really ties into a lot of the themes that we've been talking about already. So um, I think you probably get it, but just wanted to kind of verify some of the things that I'm seeing. So on to the next one. Thanks, everybody.